using scarcity as a, as an excuse, like my fear of scarcity was leading me down paths, like, um, not addressing my financial life, um, not asking for more because I was afraid of what I had, what even that alone would be taken away from me. Like, I, I don't know if you've ever experienced this or your clients have ever experienced this, but you know, I think women, especially we, we should just be happy to be here and wanting for anything. It's almost like, you're setting yourself up for doom because mm-hmm. that is not what is expected of you. And you should just be happy to be here and you should be happy with what you have because you're afraid that that even that little bit could be taken from you. Um, but absolutely. Yeah. But you know, I also learned that having financial freedom uh, as a woman, especially it is, it is it, that is it. If you want to have optionality in your life, if you want to not feel uh, this sense of, lack all the time. You have to go out there and make your own money and not be dependent on other people for the resources that you need and want. I saw that growing up too. My mother did not work for a lot of the years growing up. My father was this sort of traditional patriarchal breadwinner and there was friction in the household. There was all, there were a lot of arguments about money. I was an only child for the first 11 years of my life. And so I got to be witness to a lot of their squabbles and arguments. And as, as scary and, and sort of tough as that was as a kid to witness, I think the, the upside was that I learned very quickly that I need to take care of myself and I cannot be dependent on other people for what I, for the basics I'm so glad you brought that up because this is exactly what I'm seeing in my research with high functioning depression. When we think about trauma, we think about war, we think about near death and assault and so forth. And these are all very big traumas, but we don't think about financial scarcity and we don't think about, um, you know, our livelihoods being threatened, you know, so those can all elicit a trauma response. And mm-hmm. in my work, Trauma can show up as avoidance, right? Like mm-hmm. what you were saying just now about avoiding thinking about finances. Trauma can show up as hypervigilance. So not wanting to take risks because what if, you know, you lose it all, right? Trauma can show up as the opposite of that too. I get a lot of comments saying, well, what if you spend too much and you've had scarcity trauma? Risk taking, right? Mm-hmm. That's a big trauma response that people don't really notice. And when we acknowledge that having a lack of resources, having a fear of losing everything, having generational trauma where people in our families had to flee situations or they would lose it all, all of those things play a huge part into the psychology of spending and the psychology of finances. And if we don't think about it, if we're not reflective, then we're making these decisions and walking through life out of fear and not in... A good state of fear. 